Hello everybody, doing a little bit of harvesting today. Um, we've got a few bits to harvest for veg for the next, I don't know, three or four days, something like that. So we're gonna get that done. Then um, we're gonna have a look at a couple of things, primarily be seeds that are sowed this the start of this month. And right at the very end of this video, I have a small apology for the company called J Parkers. So let's get on with it. So the first thing I'm going to harvest is some carrots and I've got some purple ones in here. I'm just going to pull a few up. Now these are beautiful if you cook them. Well, I prefer to cook these Vichy style. I'll explain that. But there's some of the carrots, some of the purple carrots. You can see they're a very, very good size. And I'm just checking. Uh, I've got no size, no sign of carrot fly. I'll just rip the foliage off. And Vichy style is, as you can imagine, it's a French method. And um, you basically cut, you cut and peel, you peel your carrots if you want to. When they're young, I don't bother. At this age, I will. Yeah, very good size. Now cut them up into small, even pieces. Um, cut them up into small, even pieces and put them in a pan, but only half cover the carrots with water. Put a knob of butter in there, a little bit of salt. And if your carrots are like now, towards the end of the season and not the sweetest they've been, I'll put a tiny bit of sugar in there, maybe like a pinch because all that water is going to reduce down. You don't want to put teaspoons full of sugar in there for a, a two or four portion meal. You don't want to put that much in it. It's just going to over sweeten them. But if I'll taste these when I get home, if they're not very sweet, I'll put a tiniest bit of sugar in. Right, so cooking, boil them up, get them up to boiling and keep that pan moving every minute, shake them around in the pan. The idea is that you basically, you're half steaming, half boiling them and all the water will be absorbed by the carrots or will get evaporated away, which will leave you with just the butter in the pan, which will coat them. And by the time you're down to that stage, they will be cooked. You will find that even with only mildly sweet carrots, you don't need to put the sugar in because all that flavor is concentrated down into the carrots. It's a beautiful way of cooking and especially cooking these fresh carrots. I'm pretty proud of them, to be honest. Really, really happy. Right, let's go and harvest something else. Something else sweet. Now, I also want a couple of corn cobs. So, I'll just shuck these, just to see what they're like. I haven't picked any, or eaten any of this year's harvest yet, which for me is late. No, that's not bad, not bad at all. There we go, more than happy with that. That's a good, good, actually that goes a lot further down than I thought. Much bigger than I thought. Yeah, very happy with them. With that one anyway, let's, uh, we'll grab another one to take home as well. So we'll eat these today. You don't want to leave corn hanging around too much. The sugar will start turning to starch. So you want them when they're at the best. Now is when they're at the best. Preferably go and cook them now and eat them. <laughs> now here's my little lettuce patch. Now these haven't actually been in that long, probably no more than, I can only guess at sort of five or six weeks really. And they should go twice as long as this, but as you can see, they're bolting. And we're probably only gonna get harvest this week. And then maybe at the end of the week, we'll get another harvest, which gives me two weeks of lettuce. And then um, we'll rely on other things. So let's go in the tunnel and have a look what's going there with the seeds that I've sown recently. I sowed a whole multitude of things. Um, it was about 12 days ago, I think. And as you can see, a few things have come up, but many more haven't. So all these trays here, the ones with labels in anyway, the ones where I've sown seeds. And you can see the majority of this is lettuce. There is some um, of the Asian stuff over here in this back tray, but even that's got a bear showing. The Chinese cabbage at the front here, that's 
racing away. I'll be able to pot them on this week. But this salad tray, I'm hoping now, this is doing really well again, only shown 12 days ago, that's racing away. And I'm hoping that I'll be able to start picking from this when the salad outside finally runs out. So this has been, or will be, a very good provider considering the crop outside is bolting early. So hopefully we'll get a few picks off that. And I'm gonna sow another tray, probably tomorrow. I'll pop it next to it, there's space there for it ready, reserved. And I'm gonna to have to have a good think about the stuff I've sown in here. Now, the other stuff I've sown was carrots down here in this bed for overwintering, either hopefully for Christmas at time, around that time or just after. And the very strong rows that are coming through there are Eskimo. And the three at the front here, I think, are Chantenay, the much smaller, stumper-rooted ones. That's my preference over the winter, really, is the Chantenay. The brassicas, I've got a few cabbage in, rows of cabbage in over here, and a few rows of um, the cauliflower. And that's other new kale to me. Can't remember the name off the top of my head. I'll write it on the screen. So they're all coming on lovely. Now, right at the start of the year when you sow your first seeds, and for me, it's sort of onions, and then we get into January, I sow my leeks, then my peppers and aubergines. These are peppers. Um, but at that time of the year, growth is so slow that you wonder if the peppers are gonna pull through. And as they need such a long period of time to get going and to produce in, 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 in your cropping plant for that year. They take so long to get there to fruit and to ripen. You need them going as quickly as possible, really. So I always sort of cover my backside, if you like, and tend to order some plants from online, from an expert grower. And I did that this year, the same as normal. And I was let down, unfortunately. I had to actually phone the company or contact them and say, look, where the heck are my peppers? Because they'd forgotten me. They'd missed the delivery date by a long time. And then when they finally arrived, I compared them on, on a video to the ones that I'd actually grown myself. And I'll just run a little bit of that clip now. Here's the pepper plants in the middle of May. This is what I've been sent in the middle of May. Here's my very own plants back when I ordered these. These should have been delivered in, in a decent enough time where I can use them. I don't think I'm gonna get a pepper on these this year. So I really sort of hit into Jay Parker's because I, I wasn't best pleased. Somebody from Jay Parker's emailed me, contacted me, apologized, which was fair enough. I wish I hadn't have been forgotten about in the first place. I had spent my money with you, but you know, hopefully you'll improve that system for next year and make sure you uh, get things that people have bought out to them and don't forget them. But I said I was gonna grow these on, but they actually refunded me without asking, they just did it. These are the peppers that have grown. And as you can see here, we have a lot of fruit. Now it's partly because of the way I've been feeding them and good weather. But they have come on, so fair play to Parkers, they have grown on. It's a little bit later in the season. Will these ripen? I'm not entirely sure. If I'd have got them in good time, I'm fairly certain I would be picking and eating them by now, especially with this warm weather that we've had just recently. So this is a kind of an, an apology to Jay Parkers and the staff. So I'm very sorry to have said the words that I said earlier in that video. I think I was right at the time but the plants have come through, they have grown, they have done well, and it's only fair that I say this and actually note this down uh, for future reference. But don't forget your customers, don't forget their orders that they've paid for, please, and thank you. <laughs> so I've been doing some maintenance on my sweet peas, and mostly I've picked, picked a <laughs> dirty great big bucket full to go home, but I've also been cutting off as many of the flowers as I could find and these things these are the seed heads that come along what happens here is these seed heads grow from the center of the flowers as you can see on this one 
and these will grow up, fill out, and then they're ready, and the plant is then set seed. So the flower signal gets the signal through that it doesn't need to produce any more flowers. So if you cut as many of these off as you can find, and that's what I've done this morning, gone right through it, cut off all the small flowers and all the seed heads, I'll give them a feed tomorrow, and we should get another flush of flowers. We now are into the third week of August, and might get another month of blooms if I'm lucky. They might well be finished now, but and um, we've had a, a, a great harvest from them. But we'll keep going with them and we're just sort of taking off all these smaller flowers. Because what happens is your first flush of flowers, you get nice long stems. As the season goes on, those stems grow gradually smaller. And even a flower of... I haven't left them many on, have I? Even a flower of that size will sit in a jam jar, lovely. Half a dozen of those on your kitchen windowsill, lovely scent, and you're still getting flowers, so worthwhile picking. But I say, I'm cutting off all the excess I can, I'll feed them tomorrow, and hopefully we'll get another flush. But anyway, that's it for today. Look after yourselves, everyone. I'm gonna pick some more flowers, and, uh, and then I'm gonna go off home. Look after yourselves, and take care, bye-bye now.